that because, you know, the coding of the game specifically prohibits that possibility. Yeah, no goats. There's more flowers. I, the flowers are just on the damn ground. I guess it's because of the world generation and the village's roads forming last. Yeah, probably so. I have more. I have more gold. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Fucking seeds everywhere. God damn it. Yeah, every once in a while I'll just dump a bunch into a chest. I, um. And that's called Bukake. Yep. The more you know. Alright. No, but speaking of finding meaning in everything. I thought you were gonna say speaking of Bukake, and I'm like, no. Yeah, but Van. Well, what I'm going to refer to, the two aren't mutually exclusive on my podcast. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, you know the Deep Space Nine episode Explorers where Cisco builds a boat? Yes. We watched and talked about that, and, like, that's among my favorite episodes of Deep Space Nine. Mm hmm Like, of all of them, I probably re-watch that one the most frequently. Oh, yeah. So, like, of course, I participate every time we record an episode. But, like, I have... So much to say on this. I've thought about this episode so much and kind of dug down into what the episode is. Like, I was kind of freaking some of the other hosts out just for how much. Mm -hmm. Just how far I was going into it. Well, that's the weird thing about Star Trek, though, because a lot of the time the writers have hidden a whole mess of, you know, oh, sure. different interpretations, meaning. So that's different. With Evangelion, it was literally a guy going, I don't know what any of this means. Oh, I know. So... Yeah. So, like, a lot of what I was observing with the episode is how much of it informs how Jake and Ben kind of get on together for the remainder of the series. Yeah. Like, that's a lot of what that episode is about. Yeah, they build the... Was it a solar sailor? Yeah. I remember really liking that episode. Um, no, but I mean, like, on the surface of it, the episode is about Cisco building that sailboat. Mm-hmm. But it's so much more really about the relationship of him and his son. Yeah, and how... And how, like, he sees Jake growing up and getting more distant, and it becomes the turning point, and it, like, everything, all the development they have as a family unit for the rest of the series is based on what this episode starts. Hmm, because that's the episode where he stops treating him like a child, and, you know... Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I, uh, I realize I've been seeing you grow. I have to learn to let go and accept the fact that you're becoming an adult. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's... It, it's really interesting. Like, that aspect, that facet of it for me is really interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I mean, there, there's a lot of that kind of little stuff in the episode, and a lot of stuff that, like, if you go back and forth and connect it to episodes before and later, a lot of it comes into focus. Mm-hmm. Um... When they introduced the Defiant at the start of the series, like, they made a specific point to note, or it may not have been at the start of the season, but, um, the episode with Riker's transporter clone. Yeah. Where they go out and say, Cisco helped design the Defiant. And that establishes he has an interest in ship design. Yeah. Which comes back to the sailboat thing. It's, it's. It's a really interesting episode, episode to me because there's so much layers and it, it connects you so much more around it. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's a really, that's a really good point. I'd never thought of that because I know that Cis I knew that Cisco had a little bit of, uh, you know, hand in the ship design, but it hadn't occurred to me that you know he might be a bit more than just you know a passing fancy hobbyist. You know. The other thing too is. Think back to uh, that episode in season one, Dramatis Personae, where everybody's taken over by the telepathic archive. Yeah. And acts nuts. And he spends the whole episode building an antique clock. Mm-hmm. So, like, he's influenced by that telepathic archive, but I think it's also tapping into... The type of personality. Yeah. There. yeah, his own personality. It makes yeah. it easier to imprint information when it's something that would be acceptable to that particular, t you know... Yeah. type of mind you know so it's another callback he's interested in the he's interested in object of antiquity yeah and he even um i don't even remember what episode what season but like when they were talking about clearing out 
all their stored stuff on Earth. And they make an offhand reference to how he has this great collection of, um, you know, ancient African art. Mm -hmm. He's into old, like, culturally significant things. Yeah. You know, it's just all the little bits mm. and pieces. Deep Space Nine is so cool for how they develop the characters over the long term. Yeah. Every Star Trek series does that, but Deep Space Nine had a very different way of going about it. Yeah. Like I said, my only complaint about, you know, the entirety of Deep Space Nine is still the episode where, okay, this entire town is in the air, apparently. Oh, it's still the episode where... Uh, Cisco just, you know, I'm not going into a hologram of a bar because oh, yeah. several hundred years ago, even though the first episode of Star, or, you know, the original Star Trek goes, yeah, racism is over and everyone is, you know, open-minded now. Mm -hmm. uh, hundreds of years ago, my people wouldn't be allowed in that bar, so I'm not going to go in there, rar, rar, bargle, bargle. Like, okay, so even though racism has been over for centuries at this point, and everyone has, you know, made up an accepted society, it's just him that's angry. Yeah. And it's like, you, it's like so either Cisco is a dick, or everyone in the original Star Trek was lying. Right. So, that was, that for me was the episode of just, uh, alright, the rest of it is okay, but you guys... Y you messed up a little bit here. I don't think a house attached to a shop. That might be interesting. Uh, I just found a little... Okay, that looks like a good snarl up there. I can actually see that on the mini-map. That's a good start. But, um... Put out any fires close enough to it that it looks like it might be a problem. Yeah. But, you know, that was, the, that was really one of the only episodes that really... It, just straight up annoyed me for Deep Space Nine, where there's so many episodes of, like, uh, Voyager, where I'm just like, just kill them. <laughs> or, you know, Enterprise. Oh, them. Kill me. Yeah. Kill someone, just make the pain stop. You know, my friend just finished watching Enterprise. And, um, funny thing is, apparently, so far, he has now watched all of Star Trek from start to finish and Enterprise is his favorite series. Okay. And he cannot come up with a valid justification for why other than, you know, there being a lot more near nudity in it than, you know, every other Star Trek series. Well, that might have something to do with it. But, you know, it's like, you know, you might hate me, but I think I think, uh, uh, well, that, and apparently he has deep fondness for Scott Bakula. I was kind of wondering if it was the Scott Bakula. Yeah. Was, was a contributing factor. Was, well, you know. well, Scott Bakula, what can you do? <laughs> okay. Scott Bakula, you either love him or you hate him. Okay, this is good and... All of this is good and screwed up. Yeah, that's... This is all usable. There's... Oh, wow, this is gigantic. We actually might end up having to section this off into How use... How is it? Um... We can move a big mass of stuff, remember? Here's the problem. It's like a compound with a courtyard. Hmm. Because of all the houses that connect and all the ones nearby it. I'm probably just going to have to put a marker on this center tower here. Let me climb up to the second floor of it so I can put the bed down. And hop in bed. But yeah, it's a pretty large snarl that forms an almost perfect circle. That's neat. And most of the houses look like they're between 10 and 15 blocks in the air. Interesting. I mean... We need to try to find a way to keep that intact if possible. I think it's doable. I'm climbing up to the roof here. I think that there's actually a couple blo uh, buildings that are not technically touching. No, no, that's connected there. That's connected there. Uh, eh. Alright. Uh, okay, that no, that's connected to this tower. Okay, this tower is connected to about five or six different buildings, all of which are, you know, 
connected good and, you know, sturdily. Uh-huh. But it's just tentatively up against the side of this house to the point where we would only need to build, like, a one-block walkway between them. And then this house is snarled into a mess of other buildings. And the snarl... Yeah, the snarl continues around almost in a full circle. And there... Oh, wow, there's even more of them around here. I'm gonna have to... Well, I'm glad I just put a bookmark in the center of this. Yeah. Because, yeah, this entire... Okay, and that's our rooftop garden. I always like the rooftop gardens or, you know, backyards. They look neat. Well, actually, no, that one's just wedged into, like, the second floor of a building. Well, it has... The, um, the house and shop combination I found is pretty okay. Yeah. Okay, this one looks good. All right. And definitely, I'll put another one over... Or another mark over here, just so... Oh, I definitely did not just label these A. If I label them A, I'll think they're not good. Yeah, amazing. Label them E for exceptional. I label them O for outstanding. Or orgasmic. No, no, that's weird. Uh, again, this is just a tower that's walled up against the library. Yeah. Damn. That looked more interesting from a distance. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. How large is that city group? That is a large-ass city group. No wonder there are so many screwed-up things in it. Hold on. Right, let me put down this. Yeah, I've got five gold blocks. <laughs> Why are you even picking the gold up? To make into blocks. I will do something with it if I collect a large amount of it. I don't even know how much I'm going to collect. I'm just doing it because... No, but I actually have another friend whose favorite Star Trek, beyond any um, doubt, is Voyager. But he gives valid reasons that actually are perfectly logical and sensible. And I cannot remember what any of them are after he said them because it has to do with Voyager. Uh -huh. So it all goes out in my ear. But yeah, I don't mind you know, Voyager. It's not as bad as everyone always says, but it's still... Yes, it is. Well, it is, but, you know, I'm trying to be nice. It commits the capital sin of being boring. Because anyone who watches my videos probably likes Star Trek Voyager because I'm also boring. So I'm trying to be diplomatic. Um, I mean, that's, you know, that's, you know, don't want to go insulting anyone. Actually, yes, I do. You watch my videos, you have no taste. Look, my friend Hey Mickey has this great philosophy on entertainment stuff. Mm -hmm. Either be good or be bad. Just, you know... And gender of feeling. The worst thing you can do is be boring. That's true. The worst thing you can do is make me not care. That is actually a very good point. Because if I hate something, I'm at least developing a feeling about it. Yeah. It's actually causing a response in me. Because on general, people spend more time thinking about things they hate than they do about things they love. Yeah, I would say so. That's how the human brain work. Well, I mean... As someone who literally professionally writes reviews of things, no, it, I tell you, it's much easier to write a review of something that's terrible, mm -hmm. as long as it's terrible in a way where I can articulate how and why it's terrible. Yeah, just not, not always a guarantee. No, it's hate is sometimes very difficult to articulate. Yeah, I don't like it, and it's ugly, and it smells funny, and it's poop. Well, and that's kind of the thing. Like, if I hate something, but when I go to write about it, I can't actually articulate why uh. I kind of step back and reevaluate okay why do I hate this like is there something objectively wrong with this or does it just rub me the wrong way yeah you got it if you're gonna be your viewer I mean most of the time when I can actually put in words very clearly why this is not good I feel like okay this is stuff that most people will probably agree with 
Mm. If they were to handle and assess this themselves. <laughs> yeah. If I can't really explain it, you know, then I'm kind of thinking, okay, I have a problem with this. I need to look at it from a different direction. Yeah. All right. Well.